Dota has given me everything, that almost everything that I, I have materially. It's given me a bunch of friends. It's given me so much. It's also taking a lot from me. OG eliminated on day number two of TI6. Falling short of what you, you're aiming for in terms of placement has been a very harsh lesson, but it's always been one that I've been very grateful for at the end. It's just once it hits, it always sucks. This OG. is a bitter pill to swallow for OG, for their fans. There's no way that it's going to be smooth. People are probably flaming him, saying, why, why no -tail didn't carry my game, guys? Why, why no -tail did not carry OG? Why did he fail me again? There's no way that everything is going to work out the way you think it will. Why did you leave OG? The team hasn't worked for a long time. Like, we kind of hit a dead end in the end. I want to win, and I want to do it with teammates, I believe in. This was probably the shittiest moment ever. If you're willing to work on these challenges and you're willing to overcome them, you can, you can probably get the same feelings that I've gotten, which is the feeling of great accomplishment. OG wins the Series 2-1 against Evil Geniuses. The look there from both sides. They have done it. have done it. Your grand champions of TIA. It's OG. You've heard of OG. You know how a ragtag group of discards cinderella their way to not one, but two of the biggest wins in the history of esports. How a pub star, a quitter, a coach, and a comedian defied every conceivable expectation and made history. The power of flowers and friendship. Then there's the long-suffering sweetheart who made it all happen. The heart and soul of OG. The god in whose image it was created. The flower, the rainbow, the river. The Big Daddy himself. Big Daddy! Get him, get him, get him! Johan Sundstein, the feisty, adorable little viking you know as No-Tail, was born and raised in the esports powerhouse that is Denmark. Like a lot of Dota greats, he got his start in Heroes of Newworth, where at the age of 15, he met his future best friend and brother in arms, Fly. It feels it feels great winning, winning for a fourth time. It was a bit easy, but but it was it was a great, it was really great, man. What can I say? Together, Fly and No Tail took Han by storm. Once that scene began to die down, they transitioned to Dota 2, where they set their sights on a new challenge, the biggest event esports had ever seen, the International 2013. Let's just say, No Tail was confident. I'm a great guy, like, best as they get. Maybe a little too confident. Double kill for Mushy, buyback by Doxia, buyback by the that FF, but Mushy, he is destroying Triple Ultra, and he will take the top Rex, and GG! Comes out, Fnatic have been eliminated by the Malaysians. Orange will advance themselves forward. Unfortunately, Fly and No-Tail never managed to cement themselves as the kings of this new game like they wanted. Unable to find a group of truly like-minded players, ones who valued loyalty and synergy over raw individualistic talent, they spent years hovering just below the top tier. Here with No Tail, this tournament, you know, it, it didn't go the way you guys wanted it to go. What, uh, what do you think the reasons were? Um, all in all, I think there's been a bunch of things coming to this disappointing result, and there's not so much we could have done about it. I think we did try our best still. Somehow, they'd always find themselves at the butt end of a disappointment, a disbanding, or a kick. Team Secret, we, we did feel like a super team. But then there was this Star Ladder tournament. And it's onto the throne. They got Secret by the jugular, and they take. We ended up losing. And that hit us really hard. And after that, I, I kind of saw it coming. With just months to the next TI, Fly and No Tail found themselves kicked from the very team they had just joined. The crazy thing is that more than perhaps any other player, the community loved No Tail. He was funny. Out of all the things you could have decided to call yourself, why Big Daddy? Because I feel like Big Daddy. Do you? Yeah. Fiery. Give me your battle roar. <laughs> <laughs> and above all, 
friendly. At the end of the day, no matter where you were from or who you cheered for, it was hard not to love this little motherfucker. My biggest inspiration is uh, Cesar Milan, the dog whisperer. A lot of people laugh when I say it because it is kind of a funny nickname that he has. But then again, people laugh at the, one of my nicknames, so we got that in common. What nickname do people laugh at of yours? Big Daddy. Everyone wanted nothing but the best for No Tail, to see him win the big one. Unfortunately, it just didn't seem to be in the cards. When I picked him up uh, last year after TI, the first thing he told me that I have make my decision. Next year, I will be a part of the final. <laughs> it's, very <laughs> it's, it's very rough because it is, there's so much built towards this. No matter, no matter how, how much I try to look away from that, uh, every year is the biggest tournament in eSports. It's made out to be such a big thing. Falling short of what you, you're aiming for in terms of placement um, has been a, it's been a very harsh lesson, but it's always been one that I've been very grateful for at the end. It's just once it hits, it always sucks. It felt as if he and Fly were being systematically screwed over by the eSport they adored. As if no roster could ever be what they really wanted. A team that wasn't just a business, but a group of friends. A family. It can bring out the worst in people, and it forces you to be a good teammate because it's a team game. You only succeed together and you lose together. If you're not a good teammate, but you're a great player, you're probably not going to get very far, vice versa. So they said fuck it and founded their own organization. OG. Big idea behind OG is a mindset of friendship, but also want to win. We just want to do things right, like do things our way. What did it stand for, you ask? Well, as it turns out, a lot of things. Or nothing. What does OG stand for, huh? Some people say orangutan ganja. I say I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't exactly clear what OG was supposed to signify, but it embodied an obvious attitude. I mean, empathy comes with it. If you're if you're by nature uh, not somebody who's very empathic, then you you gotta you gotta learn it, which is a great thing. Like learning empathy is, I believe, like very good for all people. Uh, but Dota kind of forces you to do it. If you don't do it you're most likely going to run into some trouble in a team and it's maybe going to lose you this game, it's going to lose you this qualifier, you're not going to get where you want and you're going to sit there like, why didn't it work? By prioritizing confidence and camaraderie over results, Fly and no -Tail built a juggernaut from the ground up. One that, ironically, solidified itself as the most consistently accomplished roster Dota has ever seen. RG have got it! They've got the TG out from Secret! RG, they fight all the way through the lower bracket and will be claimed the champions of the first ever Dota 2 Major live here in Frankfurt. Drop will pop the BKB, but they beat down Fana. They go Scepter to point defensively. The pair will fall. The heroes next. OG are doing it. Liquid, they can withstand the punishment. OG are the Manila major champions. And GG is called. Your champions are OG. No tell of like these, they've won three majors. It's an incredible feat. Catch out Lil, the rocks will drop, but they just don't have the damage to repel OG. Vertus Pro call it. GG, OG will be claimed for time. Dota 2 major winners here in Kiev. The problem is that despite obliterating the competition all throughout the year, OG couldn't close when it mattered most. I, I don't think anybody ever lost a TI and went out with a smile. Uh, that probably isn't the case, but it's, you know, it's, it's a big slap in the face. For two years straight, they failed to do the one thing that every Dota player dreams of. No tail more than most. I, I don't have the answer to like how you come into TI and you know, you're gonna the favorite as a favorite and then still win. I think it's incredibly hard. A lot of things go, don't go your way and a lot of things are against you. So yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't know. Some people touted OG as a sinking ship but its two helmsmen stuck it out. Sure, their results outside of TI were tapering off, and No-Tail was humiliating himself as a carry player, but this was Fly and No-Tail, brothers who, in spite of their recent failings and frustrations, shared an unbreakable bond. At least, that's what everyone thought. It's raining, it's thunder outside, it's like electricity is in the air. And, uh, well, we just got called into a room. And I learned that the two players are leaving, and one of them's my best friend. 
Fly and S4's departure quite literally tore OG apart. It felt like an impossible betrayal, the likes of which Dota, even esports at large, had never seen. S4 leaving? Sure, I can understand that. But Fly leaving OG? He's not just the captain, he owns part of the team. His girlfriend is the manager of the team. It would tear the team apart if he would leave. With only a handful of months until TI-8, it looked like OG were done. Its pieces could still land on their feet. Seb could always coach somewhere, and Jerax was still revered as a top-tier support. But not No-Tail. This tank kick too tanky, he gets out of it. No-Tail. Bolger no Bear's dead. Eleven comes back in. They want to try and go for this No-Tail kill. Jump forward for Lanami. Finds the Impale. OG lose No-Tail. He's not got buyback on the Lone Druid. Of the OG players who'd been left behind, No-Tail was undoubtedly in the worst spot. The public perception was that Fly had done most of the heavy lifting. He'd been the captain, the drafter. He boasted a brain as big as his biceps, and the community was sure that No-Tail would flounder without him. Uh, I always thought, me and Tal, something so strong, how can it break? This was probably the shittiest moment ever. As far as anyone could tell, No-Tail was washed. I always believe that the hardest choices in life are the right ones. The ones that are easy are usually the wrong ones. And in this case, there was only one right choice, and it was the hardest one by far. It was to rebuild. So forming a team three months before TI and having a shot at winning TI? No, not happening. Hellbent on making it to the International, No-Tail transitioned back to support, put Seb in as OG's offlaner, and enlisted the help of pretty much the only other top-tier talents he could get his hands on. A quiet, unproven pub star named Thompson, and OG's former mid-laning marauder, Anna. The atmosphere uh, over the last month, like since we started, uh, started with a new roster and started the TI Bloodbath, uh, it's been very good. It's been very fun to play, it's been very light, everybody is um, very passionate, everybody gets to kind of show what they want to in the games, at least that's how I feel. I'm, I'm really aiming for that, that everybody gets to um, you know, do, do what they do best in the game and do what they want to do. And at the moment the atmosphere is really good, very light. Uh, we're having fun. Somehow, some way, they traversed the open and regional qualifiers to make it into what was being hailed as the most competitive international ever. This year, I think our chances are actually better than they've ever been. That's, that's my personal gut feeling. Touted as being the weakest of the 18 teams, the community was floored when OG managed to squeeze their way into the upper bracket. They were even more surprised when, after sauntering their way out onto the main stage, they didn't just win, they went ham. Whatever pressure or negative things, whatever goes on, once the game starts, you, you kind of sucked into it. Like everything else just goes away. Thompson with the BKB out, punching people down. They find two kills, that's GG. OG on in the upper bracket. No tell. You see ecstatic with this victory, moving into the top six for OG. What was already a miraculous run should have and probably would have ended right there had it not been for the fire sparked by OG's next opponent. As fate would have it, No-Tail's next adversary was none other than Evil Geniuses, the very roster Fly abandoned him for. Why did you leave, OG? The team hasn't worked for a long time, uh, and I can say personally that I lost a lot of motivation when the whole uh, situation arised where I could join EG. I felt a new surge of motivation where I felt like this is really a team I could win with as opposed to the previous team where I felt like we kind of hit a dead end and the end I want to win and I want to do it with teammates I believe in. Any other series, any other matchup, there's a good chance that OG would have rolled over, but not this one. They find the, uh, uh, they're gonna find this, well, they're gonna find Fly as well. GG is cold and game one. In a series where I think a lot of people would have expected to see something quite fantastic from EG. OG, they absolutely crushed it. After a visceral bloodbath, No-Tail came out on top. Oh, 
AG looking to close things up. They're on to the agent. They're beating it down at a pace that he can come to bed to. GG is called. AG wins the series 2-1. to one. He'd exercised his demons on the main stage of the International. And you could feel it. Even with such a ball oh. this tiny. Oh. oh, the look there from Nota. From that point on, all OG had to do was the impossible. OG are going for the tier fours. Charles is there deep end. They will be up in just a second. The fortification, it buys time. The hex is there from Charles, but now here comes Anna. He's on the front lines. Jirax leaping forward. All he has to do is create space for OG to do it, to get to the grand final of TIA. Tip him up, poor tip him over. The lead comes forward. They've got the control. X Nova, he'll go down. This is the game. LGD have nothing left. OG have done it! By rallying around the force of nature that was No Tail, OG were able to string together a series of batshit crazy comebacks that landed them in their first ever TI final. It was the day No Tail had been waiting for his entire career. I strongly believe that if I woke up a morning and I had to play the TI final, I would play the best Dota of my life. And that's all that would matter to me. If I played my very best, nothing else would matter. And he did. Potentially unlikely to save him as Anna. Surely he wants to still chase and indeed rushes forward. There's Jarex with the tab. He's got the snowball to dodge the Spirit Lance at least, but FY very low. Actually gets taken down there. All right, the blast from No Tail Satire Tormentor. Just not for very long. Somnus has the damage. They're on top of Jarex. Somnus gets the triple kill. Maybe even more as Anna. Now, all alone. No Tail's trying to come across to help him. Anna turning towards Nova. He's stuck in there with him as Anna will possibly find her. He does. He's going to have Doppelganger back up in a second, but the Blood Bright, is it there in time? It's not. Doppelganger's back up. He could jump out. Looks towards Chalice. Spirit Lance finishes Chalice off. Anna gets another. Somnus did find No Tail, but Anna's still oh going. Can Somnus kill it? The Doppelganger's there. Anna trying to Phantom Rush himself away, but Somnus in with the chase. The Diffuser Blade on Sonus of the FY with the shards. Shoves an igloo into the backside of Anna. Finally, it was starting to look as if OG's free-spirited, chat-wheeling rise to the top was coming to an end. But in typical OG fashion, right as all looked to be lost, they rallied. As the buyback for Jarex comes in, he's healing Anna back up. That buyback could set them up for the kill on X Nova. The cold snap down onto the Enchanter. They find him. Oh man, he's out of mana. He's starting to shift into the strength, but he's surrounded. OG, can they find the ball? They can! OG are still in the game. Slowly but surely, OG crawled their way back into a series that they were never supposed to win. Time and time again, they stayed cool. Adam, can he do it here? He's at half out set. Tap the goal. He gets the goal of his lifetime. And persevered. And they're all up. I just take a slow fight. They died to make us. Just a slow fight in their base. They will die back early when they see this. Anna says he's done with this. Or kill them. He wants to end this game. Until finally, they were doing the one thing that No Tail had always dreamed of. As OG, the Nimbus down, the shockwave from Seb gets themselves another. They're onto the agent. OG. OG. OG battled their way to what is almost inarguably the single most miraculous tournament victory ever. It was beautiful, unforgettable, and undeniably well-deserved. But it was a fluke, something that could never, ever be repeated. Or so we thought. One year after their unthinkable run at TI8, OG returned to the International as an unknown quantity. They'd taken much of the year off, using it as an opportunity to relax and recuperate. The expectation was that having already done the impossible, their fire had been quelled. Why should you become weaker from doing this once? You can stamp it again. Because you're satisfied with yourself. Because you're satisfied. So you're weak now. You had this infinite source of motivation. Now it's not there anymore, you know? But the way I see it is that it's still there. You just chose to let it go. 
OG had an unshakable faith in themselves, but no player, never mind a team, had ever racked up two TI titles. So why is it that winning two TIs has been so difficult thus far? Well, it hasn't been that difficult for us so far. We're not there yet. <laughs> 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 we'll let you know after TI9. <laughs> it seemed to go without saying that if anyone was going to do it, it sure as shit wasn't going to be a one in a million underdog like OG. Nobody took their silly self-confidence seriously. But as it turns out, the community was wrong to underestimate OG, just like the first time. He's the man that's going, going, going into the fountain once again, bathed in the glory. He just does not give a crap. Adam will give all the life. This is just fountain bombing. GG! Okay. GG! <laughs> the difference is that this time around, OG were bullies. They gave zero shits, had nothing to lose, and played like it. And this will be Manor on the Tunny now. Gets three bottle rune charges up. So Fly, they start with the avalanche. Seb's moved over as well. Fly, he can get one punch in. <laughs> He's he ain't no one-punch man. He very clearly placed the no-tail flag. So was staring him in the eyes when he died. In a near-perfect recreation of the previous year's run, OG steamrolled their way through the upper bracket. But OG, they will push forward to the winner's bracket final, repeating the history of TI8, 2-1-ing EG in this semi-final two. Now, the physical damage will overwhelm the throne and PSG LGD in a three versus five can no longer hold. OG in the upper bracket finals, break down LGD. OG are going to the grand finals for the second year in a row. By the time the finals rolled around, it felt as if resistance was futile. As if OG's caustic combination of fire, flowers, and friendship simply couldn't be stopped. I can't believe what we're seeing in this game for OG. You throw your sword all against you. You throw the sword all against you. There it is. Yes, no. OG, I am two time TI champions. Yes. 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 Yeah, no Tail has won four majors, two TIs back to back, and stands as the single highest earning competitor in the history of esports. He is, in no uncertain terms, the single greatest player his game has ever seen. He's also the sweetest. You didn't leave me for you talk to them too. Never never do this to yourself again, man. You're the fucking best man. Ah. You're the absolute best man. Never doubt yourself again. Yeah, remind, remind me later this year. <laughs> we all do it. I'll be we there. We all do I'll it. I'll be right? there. And once, once my turn, you'll be there. There's a lot to OG's story. Innumerable things that make it one of, if not the most miraculous tales in esports. But at the center of it all is no tale. You are here with a Dota 2 legend. Oh, feels good, man. The one who suffered more than anyone else. Before this tournament, um, things were a bit dark. Uh, my dog had died, and um, yeah, oh, it, was, it was really rough oh for a God. couple of weeks. Sorry. My, my self esteem was pretty low, and, and now we're here. Who took all of the shit that the world had to throw at him in stride. Which shoulder is it, man? What? This one? Which <laughs> I actually don't remember. Oh, I think so it must be this one. Place. It must be this one. The man who deigned to have a vision, to stay true to it even as it crumbled before him. The man who watched as it came to fruition in the greatest way imaginable. You win as a team and you lose as a team. If you look at a game like, like this, I also think you get to enjoy it more. The one dude in professional gaming who made the silly, stupid decision to believe in friendship. And who wasn't just rewarded for it, but deified. The fucking best team in history, the best team in history. <laughs> and you are friends. That's the most important thing. You are friends. Imagine. No Tail is everything that Dota should be a flower, but also a rainbow and the river. 
the biggest of daddies, the manifestation of all perfection. And I wanna, I don't fucking know. You are fucking perfect, mate. Fucking perfect. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.